Hello and welcome to another exciting blender tutorial. We're going to be making an alien egg with slime and goop. Let's get started. So today what we're going to be doing is making this really creepy alien egg with goop and slime and these like spider things coming out. It's disgusting. If you want to get this final image so this final render, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is actually going through all the modeling and stuff. So we're going to get to this image here how to do this using the sculpt brush tools, how to use the cell fracture modifier to create the eggshells. All that cool stuff is in this tutorial. But if you want to catch all the materials and lighting in the final image, you got to head over to Patreon and catch the full video there. It's about an hour and a half long. We do everything in detail. You can also catch that video if you join on YouTube at the all access past level and higher. Special shout out to everybody who supports the channel. You're amazing. Thanks for making these videos happen. OK, so let's start off by making the egg and then we're going to talk about making the slime. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and delete my default cube. And I'm going to go shift a and we're going to create a mesh UV sphere and I'll hit G and Z just to bring it up a little bit. So it's sitting on my uh, 3D ground there. And then I'm going to uh, hit, let's see, S to scale and Z. I'm going to scale it up on the Z, make it a bit elongated like that. Bring it back up again. And I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to take this top vertex up here. I'm going to turn on proportional editing and I'm going to hit S to scale and I'm going to roll my mouse wheel just to change the size of this fall off, just to get a bit of an egg shape. That's pretty good. We might be able to grab this bottom one too and grab up a little bit to kind of flatten the bottom. Um, I think that looks that looks all right. That should work. Awesome. All right, great. I'm going to right click and shade smooth. Now, next thing I want to do is kind of smooth it out a little bit. I want to get a little more geo in here before we uh, start to break up the egg. So I'm going to click on my wrench here to go to modifiers. I'm going to click add modifier. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface and this will smooth things out. I'm just turning on my level uh, to two um, and my render make sure it matches so that when I hit render, it's going to use this number for the subdivisions, whereas in my viewport, it's just using the first number. So keep that in mind. OK, great. Now, once we've got that, I'm going to go and apply this modifier, actually. So forget what I just said about renders, because now it's gone and we've just applied it to our mesh. So you can see now we have super dense mesh. Looks really cool. All right. Now I'm going to grab um, an add-on and make sure it's activated. Come over here to preferences under edit and come right up here to add-ons, uh, cell fracture. So cell fracture. And if it isn't turned on already for you, just make sure you turn that on and it's uh, ready to go. So we'll come over here and we'll hit F3 in our viewport and type cell fracture. And I'll just hit return. And this will give us all these different settings and stuff we can change. You can play with this to create really interesting fracture effects. So it's worth experimenting with. I'm just going to go with the default to keep it easy. So I'm going to hit OK and it's going to get to work. You can see Shell Fracture creates a bunch of different objects uh, based on our original object. It keeps the original object around. So we have the sphere here still um, and uh, we can keep that. I'm just going to turn it off for now, just hiding it with the eye. I'm also going to hide it from renders at the moment. And now what I'm going to do is I want to take um, a couple of these um, these egg shell bits and I'm going to remove some from the top because I want to have the top of my egg cracked open for this uh, this image. So what I'm going to do is just B to box select and I'll just grab a couple of these top ones here, something like this. One thing about the solidify modifier is it you know, makes everything kind of these big solid chunks like this. But we can clean this up pretty easily just by looking from the top down view. Let's select uh, all of these guys with uh, the box select. So just hitting B to box select, dragging a box around all that. Just make sure it's selected everything. And then with everything selected, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And what I can do is go to face mode and just Alt A to deselect all. And I can just B to box select and just drag a box kind of in that center section. And then I can hit X to delete and I can delete those vertices and just do this a couple of times. Start to clear things up until we get down to just a few. I've got a few more to go. I'm just continuing to go until uh, I've got everything now. As I get down to the bottom, you're going to start selecting some outer bits. So you can just turn to you can see those and then hit B to box select and hold down shift and that will deselect those. And if you don't have transparent turned on, it means it'll just select what's visible. So that leaves these still selected. So it's pretty easy to go in and continue to work on that. OK, so once you've got all that cleaned up, what we can do is select one of these pieces and then just B to box select the others and we're going to join them all together. So I'm going to hit Control J to join. Now that it's all just one piece of mesh, it's a bit easier to see my outliner and deal with. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to hit A to select all. And I want to go ahead and let's see. I want to merge up some of these these cuts so not all of the breaks are continuous. So a good way to do that is to use the 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 merge by distance tool. So I'm going to just zoom out from here the side view here and I'm going to hit B to box select, hold down shift and I'm going to deselect the whole top half of my egg. 
I'll turn on transparent mode actually, just so I can get all of it. You can see transparent mode allows me to deselect the verts that I couldn't see that were behind the surface that I was looking at in this view. So that's a really good tip. So I'm gonna merge these down here. So I'm gonna hit M to merge by distance, and then I'm gonna change my merge distance. I'll just get rid of one of these zeros maybe. Uh, maybe go one more, see what that looks like. And then let's just exit out. What you can see what that did is that it's actually kind of fused a lot of these seams down in this lower section here. So we've got some, we've got some breaks still, but overall it looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go into edit mode again, hit A to select all, and then E to extrude and S to scale. Oop, turning off proportional editing, so S to scale. Now to get rid of this bad sort of ugly shading look, we just need to come over to the green data tab here for the object and under normals, turn on auto smooth. I wanna go in here and uh, first off, I need to have, I need to have a kind of a creature inside this egg so that uh, I've got something that I can see through the slime that I'm gonna make. So I'm actually gonna make a really simple creature, just with some undefined shape that we can see through the uh, the slime. So feel free to put as much time in this as you want for this step. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go shift A and I'm gonna create a isosphere. I'll bring this over here. I'll go into edit mode and I'll go to face mode and I'm going to hit I to inset. And I'm just gonna drag and let this sort of pop-up menu appear. So. I'm gonna move my face so you can see this properly. And I'm gonna click on individual. Now this is going to allow me to uh, inset each individual face. There we go, just drag out the thickness down a little bit. So I get these nice uh, sort of extra faces inside of each face. Um, so again, if you wanna get this little menu, the way to do it is just activate a tool and then click somewhere and you get this menu and you have all the controls that you would normally have uh, when you're just dragging your mouse, but it's a bit more specific. So with all these guys still selected, I'm gonna hit E to extrude, and then I'll hit escape to cancel out of that, and then S to scale. Actually, I'll go Alt S. This allows us to scale along normals. So instead of getting bigger as it goes out, it's gonna stay the same size. So I'll go out like this, uh, something like, like this, I think. And then I'm gonna switch this to uh, individual origins. So now, whatever I do, it's gonna do it from the individual origin of each face. So if I hit S now to scale, you can see instead of scaling all of it around each other, it's scaling each face individually. So I'm just gonna bring all these guys in and let's see, I might hit E to extrude and grab Z maybe, and I'll switch back to median point and now S. So you can, now you can see scale is pushing them all away from each other. So there we go. So we got like this, these weird spider-like arms. Um, I might throw a subdivision surface modifier onto this thing and uh, give it viewport layer of render of two. I'll set this to shade smooth and then I'll S to scale, grab X, and I'm just going to stick this thing inside the egg. So I want one big predominant claw kind of coming up out of my egg. So this, this will create some interesting shape inside, but let's make some kind of like spider arm thing. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Mesh Cube, and scale it ground, grab Z, bring it right up here. And I'm gonna go into edit mode, I'll grab this face, and uh, let's see, I'll scale it all right down, just positioning it kind of roughly where I want. I might rotate this on the X a little bit. I'll grab this face here, and I will E to extrude, grab Z, bring it up, grab Y, um, and this will kind of be the first part. I might hit E, maybe give it a bit of like a joint. I'm gonna switch from global to normal, and this will allow me to kind of move just along the normal here, which is the direction that the face is pointing. So I hit E again, grab up, E, grab up, and then E, and let's rotate, actually the scale down this time, and grab it up. And I might switch to transparent mode and just grab these guys and rotate X a little bit like that. And then leave transparent mode, grab that front one there and hit E again and bring this up. Actually, I want to rotate X with this one. Bring it like that, I think, and then E and then bring it out. All right, that's pretty cool. Now I could place this thing wherever I want. Um, and let's put a subdivision surface modifier on this one just to smooth him right out. All right, just duplicate it, put another one somewhere. All right, cool. So now we want to start uh, thinking about the slime itself. Um, so what we're gonna do for this first, we're gonna create a basic sort of, I don't know, we call it like a base mesh basically that we can use to then sculpt off of. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, Mesh Cube, and I'm gonna scale this cube down and I'll bring it up. And I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna go into uh, edit mode. 
And I'll grab this top face and I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna even extrude, I'm gonna scale down, and I'm gonna grab Z, and I'm gonna kind of center it up around this one here. And like this, I think. And um, so I'm just kind of like encasing this guy with, with some mesh. And I'm gonna control R, I'm gonna put in a loop cut right here, and then grab this section here. And I'm I'm gonna make this a bit like a drip. So I'm going to hit E to extrude. I'll grab Z and I'll bring this down. I'm going to make a spot for this thing to connect. So I'm going to grab this face here and hit I to inset and just bring it in. And I'll just bring this down on the X, something like this. And I'll go into transparent mode, mode grab this one, bring it up here, and uh, take this one again and maybe scale it down. Um, and then what we can do is we can join these two up. So I can delete this face here, delete this face here. This probably isn't necessary. It's kind of pedantic, to be honest, but. Um, I'll just turn on snapping up here. So turn on the snapping and set this to vertex mode. And then what I can do is grab these uh, vertexes and just snap them. A, select all, M to merge by distance. And I'll just increase that back up to what it was before. And that will just merge those vertexes in there. There we go. So we've just got like this little area. It's gonna be like a drip zone. Um, I'll come over here and I'll grab this. So you kind of don't really have to do the base mesh like this. Um, you can just like literally start off with, you know, just a cube or whatever. Um, but find this, this helps just speed things up. You've got a little bit more to work with. All right, cool. So we've got this base mesh now. I've got everything kind of worked out where I've got bits sort of expanded around my individual arms and I've got this one section for a drip. It's pretty simple. It doesn't really look great, but what we're going to do is we're going to switch over into sculpt mode and really make this thing look like slime. I want to pause for just a quick second to give a shout out to the blenderartist.org website. Uh, they're running a really cool competition right now. You can win a trip to the Blender Conference this year. So it's pretty amazing. If you want to get to Amsterdam to go to the Blender Conference, head over to the website. The link is in the description of this video. I'm planning to be at the Blender Conference this year. So if you are around, hit me up. It'd be so cool to meet you. Thanks again. Back to the tutorial. All right, so let's like the base mesh and let's uh, switch up here from object mode to sculpt mode. Now, in sculpt mode, we've got, sculpt mode, we've got our, our sculpting tools here. And up here at the top, we've got this option called Dino Topo. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. You might get a little warning, but don't worry about that. I'm just going to click OK and we are good to go. Now, what this does is basically it's going to create new mesh on top of our mesh as we sculpt. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to use the, I don't know, use this, uh, this one right here, the inflate tool and I'll just start drawing here and you can see it subdivides the mesh and starts uh, starts making it um, starts subdividing to, to more and more triangles. The closer you are to your mesh, the more fine detail those triangles are going to be. You can see it subdivides it even smaller as I zoom in. I'm going to get super fine detail or as I zoom out, I'm getting this sort of broad strokes. Also, bear in mind it's destructive. So, you know, if you paint over a section when you're zoomed out, it will simplify all that mesh. So bear that in mind, the closer you are to it, the further away that has an effect on the, the sculpt. So let's just uh, play with this. I'm just going to use the inflate and probably, I don't know, we could use a bit of this one. They're all fun to play with. Um, keep in mind up here, we've got the strength, so how strong uh, the, the effect is, and you've got the plus and minus. So are you pushing in or pulling out? So if we go minus, we're gonna be pushing in like that, uh, whereas the plus pulls it out, pretty simple. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of, I don't know, paint over these sections, just using my mouse, uh, nothing fancy. Might switch to minus, because our um, base mesh is pretty big here. So I'm gonna turn my strength all the way up to one as well. and um, I will just push this in around my around the claw here. Now, if you want to feel like you're using ZBrush, you can come up here to this little drop down menu and switch this to matte cap and then switch this to that color. I know you're going to really feel like you're, you're a pro 3D user. And expand it out so it's kind of like bigger than these these edges here and i can just go in here and sculpt these drips Let's see how the closer i get the more detail i get on these uh on the brush now these yellow ones down here are actual like um we can deform it by just moving bits around so it doesn't really create new geometry so i can use this for example to just pull out sections 
if I want to kind of fill it out. All right, so we've created some really creepy slime and these little claw things coming out of our egg. I think it's looking really cool. Let's go ahead and create a camera and get a nice shot set up. I'm gonna go Shift A and I'm going to create a camera. And I will jump into my camera and I'm gonna come over here to view and I will tick right here, lock camera to view. And then I'm just going to set my view up. I already had a camera in the scene, go figure. Let's look into this one. There we go. All right, now, so I can really concentrate on my view. I'm gonna to go to my camera, down to the camera tab, open up viewport display and turn up passport too. So it darkens everything else around my, uh, my frame. So I can just focus on what's important. Awesome. And there we go, creepy spider goop. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna find out how to get to this final image like I've got here, you wanna head over to Patreon or join on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher. There's a full hour and a half long video there where I go through everything in detail. So if you wanna check that out, you can head over there. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a fantastic week. I'll see you later. Oh, 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 oh,